Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Order to Reformer Craft. So I placed the fence around the huge drill hole we made in the last episode. Now it's actually time to take all of the extracted cobble and ores and bring it back to base and process all of that into something more useful. Then what I also want to do in this episode is actually make the sweet rolls and get into some laser automation. Okay, let's head home. I actually just noticed that all my dogs are gone. So I had them placed here next to the lemon trees and another bunch was over there. After last update, I think they actually fixed the wolves. Oh, I guess they were able to roam around freely. What happened to them? Can't see them on the map either. Oh god, did they go into a cave maybe? Let's maybe do some exploration first. Here on the map shows there's one entity lower down. Oh, there's one. Okay. What happened to the others though? I could imagine they went in there to have some torches on me, no. Maybe for some skeletons. Oh no! Okay, it was definitely the last update. Now the wolves actually do stuff, they follow you. And I think if you shift, right click them. You can even give them commands like sit, follow me, hunt with me, relax. Ah, right around the time I actually can do stuff with the wolf. It looks like we lost a lot of them. Just gonna tell this guy to sit. Perfect. But where are the others? I had five wolves in total. Um, they could be anywhere at this point. Don't even show up on the map. Honestly, it looks like this stuff even works. Not like the vanilla wolves that are pointless. This one is following me nicely around. Oh my god. <laughs> ah, don't tell me I need to tame wolves again because they're actually cool now. Here's another big cave entrance. Might as well finally placed on some everlasting torches. Yeah, if I look at this, I think the wolves basically got in a fight with skeletons and got killed. Ah, uh, that must have happened. Too bad. Still don't have any armor. Maybe once we actually processed all of the, the cobble we got, we should have a decent amount of iron. I'm gonna make some armor then. So if all of those commands here work out nicely, we're kind of missing really out on the wolves. Good, we still have the one here. So there's yeah commands to tell the animal to relax, then it will just wander around. Then you can set a home point and then yeah, wouldn't just wander far off. Like the actually the, the wolves do in the wild as well. They always came back to the same spot to sleep at night. I noticed that. It's also how we could trap them easily, then can tell them to sit. They'll sit for a while, but not forever. Okay, good to know. Then follow me. Then yeah, the wolf will just follow you, but not try to aid in combat, and you can also set it to hunting. Ah, this is so cool! Now let's do the minecart disassembly. Hopefully this works. Oh, all of those chests. I can't even push the mine. Oh, I can push the minecart. Okay. And they're all here. I wonder what actually happens if there is a yeah, collision with other blocks. Don't want to find out right now. All of this stuff doesn't even fit into a double chest. So we got a whole chest completely filled with normal native copper. So each of those stacks is 400 millibuckets of copper. So we got 144 ingots of copper and then we still got the ore doubling. So roughly 288. Then I got all the rich stuff and some poor stuff as well. Probably gonna get 500 ingots out of that. Okay, so let's start. So we can melt this down into 576 ingots. A couple more, so roughly 617 iron ore. Good that they actually in the last update added the option to make copper blocks as well. Because we got too much of that stuff, I can maybe make the roof out of copper. Got a small amount of clay as well, let's put it in there. Because we're gonna need a lot of the ingot molds for all of that copper. Next, let's make some redstone. So we got so much of that phyllite cobble. If we put that into a crusher, grind it down to gravel, and then grind it down to sand, and then grind that again. We will get redstone. Okay, let's see what we get out of 27 stacks. So despite running this at full speed, it just takes a while. In the meantime, I actually need to eat again. Let's make some sweet rolls. I'm just gonna bring over a barrel of milk and place it here on top of the pump and pipes. And it should actually just pump into the spout. If we break some bread, we can make those sweet rolls. So let's hurry up, I'm starving. Okay, one barrel of milk. Not sure if we need to unseal it. Then let's turn on the pump. 
Here it comes. <laughs> okay, spout fill up with milk and then just, just put the bread on top. Here you go, first sweet rolls. Okay, so let's see. Uh, it gives you grain, dairy, and for some reason fruit, although we don't put any fruit in there. And the best thing is, it never expires. It's such an OP food item. So I'm gonna do nothing else but eat sweet rolls for a while. That sounds healthy. <laughs> Wonder how much we'll get. Okay, let's put more bread in there. Definitely gonna turn yeah, all of the milk and bread I have right now into sweet rolls. Okay, so you have to unseal it. Then it flows. Honestly, I feel like this might be a little bit overpowered if the never expires and the yeah, nutrition gives you. So fruit coming out of nowhere. I don't get this one. Um, of course, it's super convenient to have that. Actually gonna put this stuff into my toolbox. We're always gonna have, yeah, I'm gonna make more of this. Uh, always gonna have 128 sweet rolls in there. So starving shouldn't be an issue anymore. Just took out the ladders. So we have yeah, one more space available since we have the scaffolding now, but it's kind of redundant. We'd have to see where I end up in terms of HP if I eat nothing but sweet rolls. But I feel like your yeah, fruit should be removed and maybe grain and dairy also halved. So you hover around like 600 if you only eat that stuff. I think it would be a fair balance or making it more expensive. Um, maybe instead of bread, pumpkin pie would be used. That might be better, I guess. And similarly, if you grind down the andesite cobble, so into gravel, sand, we will get coke powder so we can make more bituminous coal. It's definitely something I'm really interested in, so whole chest it is. So now I want to do something with all of the silty loam dirt we got. So if you add water to this and mix it in such a mixer, you will get silty loam mud. And if you put that through the crushing wheels, it will actually give us clay balls. So I guess I'm just gonna expand the system here uh, in order to, yeah, to those steps. Add another set of crushing wheels. Can I set up the mechanical crafter for this, of course, again. And have the, the mixer in front. And we need to, yeah, to, need to get water from somewhere. Uh, since I can't really move a water source, we're just gonna run a fluid pipe. I got a shovel. <laughs> gonna run the fluid pipe and take it from here. So I'm gathering the materials for the mechanical crafter right now. But yeah, the coke powder is finished, so we actually got a really good amount. I'm gonna mix this with lignite and put the bituminous coal in here. I'm not gonna convert all of the lignite though, because it's nice to have basically both options. So in case, for example, we want to heat up some of the wrought iron in order to forge something out of it, we can uh, use the lignite because it would heat it up to yellow white, where it doesn't melt yet, but we can still weld it and work it. So in that case, the lignite would actually be preferred. Oh, I actually completely forgot that a couple episodes ago, we made two sets of crushing wheels in order yeah, to not have to set up the whole mechanical crafter again. Well, I made 16 more. I'm sure we'll need that for something anyway at some point. Okay, but yeah, got the crushing wheels already. Oh no, I just got a sad message. Male dog drowned. Where does this even happen? Did they run towards the ocean or what? How did they drown? No! Well, they're definitely not at the beach. I guess they wandered into a cave somewhere and I just can't find them. Oh, it's so unfortunate. Oh, this one! I found another female dog! It's definitely mine! <laughs> Follow me! Okay, they wandered off really far away from base. There's another entity. Let's check. Maybe some wandered into the caves there. Let's try to head. Oh, yeah, there's one! We're getting them all back! <laughs> Except the one that drowned. <laughs> okay, follow me. Any other entities that are kinda close? That is a deer. At least three out of five. And even a male, so we can get more puppies now. There's another entity, straight ahead. Could actually be the fourth wolf as well though. Um, so there, were, there was this pack of wolves around that I tamed. Got three out of four, one was always a little bit further away. 
This is mine. Actually, so scared that my wolves get it. No, they shouldn't get into a fight. Female dog, yeah, okay. So we got <laughs> four out of five, and unfortunately, one of them drowned. Okay, follow me. Almost got the whole pack again. Yeah, the following it also actually works. This wasn't the hardest terrain, but the 300 blocks, this actually worked. Okay, so let's set a new home point. Oh, they're also sleeping sideways. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> but I'm actually too scared to let all of them roam around freely. So at least the male dog will be leashed. Is this the male dog? Yes. The other two can roam around just to see if, if they get into any trouble. Got cave entrances. Uh, one time I actually got attacked by a baby zombie while doing some work here on the field. So could it actually happen that they get in the fight with a skeleton? Let's definitely keep an eye on him. So I started setting this up. We're gonna have an input chest here just for the dirt. Then next we put it into the mixer and make the mud. Still need to set up the filter so it only takes out the mud. Then it's gonna get transported with the belt to the crushing wheels. Then we turn this into the clay balls. Okay, then the only thing we still need is a little bit of water. So I'm gonna hook up a pipe and run it all the way over to the little pond. Let's see. Can we get through this uh, hot air? Above, yep. <laughs> it's a nice path. So I, I think it's enough if we just have a pipe facing upwards like this and it can take water from that water source. Um, but we'll have to see. I haven't done too much of the pipes yet. So I'm just gonna dig down here a little bit and hide the pipe below. As far as I know, I, I can't really put a gravel directly on the pipe because um, it would fall down. Break it, yes. Okay. Oh, drowning. I guess I don't want to destroy this little pond here in the back. Later, once we got the bucket, we can just move a water source. So for now, I'm just gonna keep this a bit naturally. Oh, now it's collapsing this way. Uh, it's gonna be tough. It doesn't always collapse though. <laughs> Harder than I thought. Okay. Two more bricks. That should do it. Take into to my pipe. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a couple blocks over. We should hit the entry again. Okay, perfect. Then we can just run it along here. I ah, need a couple more pipes. And over here. And then we can also hook up the pump to the whole system. Okay, the pump here. Then a cogwheel. And how do we hook this up? Could hook it up to the shaft here of a belt. If you move it by one block. Yeah, that should be better. Shaft and a belt. Okay, not just facing the wrong way. Like this. Okay, it should pump water. Um, the corners can't be made see-through. The rest. It's not really quick, might take a while. Oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> The Ponder Index actually told me that the pumps can only affect pipes that are up to 16 blocks away. So we're like 6, 8... That might be too much. Um, I may just try to have one here. Got one more. Let's see if we can hook this up. Just gonna run the shaft. Okay, this might be close enough now. I can't really tell. 
I had two copper sheets left over, enough to make a fluid tank. So let's use that instead, um, just to see if maybe we're too far away. And the belt again. No direction. It's not correct yet, other way around. There should also be a visual indicator if it actually sucks in water if we go to the end of the oh end of the pipe I mean it's definitely a water source right it's not a it's not flowing water should work oh no it actually flowing okay just takes some time it's coming <laughs> okay at least we can get it this far maybe we need a second pump um Okay. And then I guess we're just gonna add the other pump again here. Let's make this flow in the right direction and it's pulling immediately. Okay, now I'm actually curious if we do need the fluid tank. That was kind of expensive. Or we can just have a normal pipe. Looks like it's working. Do we need the second pump now? Um, I'm gonna test this as well. So I'm just gonna place this basin again. Then let's hook up the pipe. No, one pump is enough if placed correctly, I guess. Okay, then I just have to wire the last machines and belts and then we can try this out. Okay, first let's actually try to make some mud. I'm gonna put in a little bit of dirt, just yeah, for the filter item, basically. <gasps> Not like this. <laughs> Okay, just throw it. That's a shoot. <laughs> they look quite similar though. Okay. There's the basin. Okay, one item. And we gotta wait for the water, of course. Water's coming. Was this maybe a recipe that required multiple? Let's put in a whole stack. Silty loam dirt plus water. Should make silty loam mud. Silty. Loam dirt in the mixer should make salty loam mud. Oh, I kind of forgot that the mixer always needs at least 32 RPM. Um, so everything right now is hooked up basically to the rotation speed controller. Just go to 32. Should fix it. Okay, now we're bubbling. Looks like the silty loam dirt stays in there. Okay, just gonna pick one of the mud items and select the filter anyway. Does this mean we can't put it in there though? No, silty loam dirt goes in there. Okay, it's actually decently fast. Okay, let's follow it. Crushing wheel. There's the clay ball. We have a chest still here, so I can also just put in clay balls that I bring myself. But I wonder if we actually get a clay ball for each dirt block. Uh, we have so much dirt. I don't think I need to collect clay ever again, really. Technically, I could also speed up the whole system now. It would actually be nice to have, have the stressometer display exactly what a, like a subsystem uses from a certain point. Yeah, anyway, let's actually check. How close we are to the limit right now with everything running. We got 4000 SU remaining. I guess we can double the speed. I guess the... Yeah, the bottleneck is still here, the drying. Okay, but let's actually try it out a bit quicker. Let's go to up to 64. Should still be fine. That's the route. There we go, 64. Now the crushing wheels need like a thousand in total, yeah. I mean, I'm also shearing the sheep on the side. We will soon have a third max sized windmill as well. Can go a little bit higher. Okay, what's actually the bottleneck right now? No dirt. <laughs> that would explain it. Seems like 
Yeah, the mixer can perfectly keep up. Oh, not quite. Yeah, crushing wheel for sure can keep up. Do we have a chance to get clay balls though? Then we should maybe just speed up the stuff in the back. Um, it is a 25% chance. Okay, so four dirt make one clay ball. Then we could maybe speed up the stuff here in the back and run this at the same speed, I feel like. Might be actually the, the better choice. So save a little bit on stress units again. So basically the whole subsystem here in the back needs to run a bit faster, including, I guess, the pump. Oh, that requires yeah, some redoing. I feel like always enough gearboxes are the solution. So now we can also hook up the pump to this belt. There we go. And now I can adjust the speed here for the subsystem. Let's actually go to 128. Go for it. Okay, let's see. If you're getting bottleneck. Oh no, it's going the wrong way! Well, we need another gear shift. Probably sets this up to negative 128. Should also do the trick. Yeah, it does. Alright, it's working great now. I'm gonna put in literally all of my dirt that I got from the quarry. But I also got so much more of that stuff from digging around the house or digging the hill for the bamboo farm. Like so many chests here filled with different types of dirt. Uh, we got the silt dirt and the silty loam dirt. I think I got even two more chests there. I already checked uh, what you can get out of the silt dirt. So if you mix it, of course, um, you would get silt mud. And if you crush that, you also get clay balls. Just need to set up the filter correctly. You can even get a few compacted. Oh, then you can even get cobble from dirt. The bottleneck definitely right now is also the system that runs a bit slower. You get more and more clay balls here. So I was thinking about speeding this up to 32 as well. That should still work. Are there any issues? Okay, let's set it a bit higher. Then we just gotta check on the the fan here. It always takes a while until we get a new clay mold. I don't think that's gonna bottleneck at all. To me it almost seems like we actually got a bottleneck here at the crushing wheels. There's always one item on the belt. Oh, it's actually a bottleneck here to the mixer. Does it only make one item at a time? Yeah, it does. But I wish you would just keep mixing. When we got enough dirt in there, why does it always raise the arm? It doesn't do that as far as I know when I make the igneous alloy, for example, it just keeps mixing. Maybe we should actually tell it to only output. I can do this with the, the smart funnel once we have a certain amount of items. Okay, here we got the basin st uh, dropping stuff directly. I might need to move this like back a block so we can have actually a smart funnel there. Um, let's try it out. Okay, can I just place this here? Okay, and then I can tell it to only output... We got like 16. Now it's... Yeah, and now it keeps mixing. Looks like that's working. Okay, so it's working a lot better. Then we can probably even slow this down again. I don't think we quite hit an equilibrium. We definitely keep gaining more clay balls here. So we could either slow this down or speed this up slightly again. So instead of using the mechanical crafter, like I said in a previous episode, I could also use the mechanical press. I think this would actually be faster if you look at this. Just slows down everything. So we definitely got rid of the crafting bottleneck, but now it seems like things are being slowed down here by the crushing wheels. Those of course requires the most rest units out of everything, but I feel like if we would just double up the speed here, then everything goes, goes quicker. So we're still not limited here in the back uh, with the mold eating. The problem is just it's getting uh, really crammed in there and now somehow trying to speed up just the crushing wheels might get a bit tricky. 
But there's actually something I was using more and more, which is the encased chain drive. And there's even an upgraded version. If you look at the ponder index, this might be exactly what we need. This is the adjustable chain gear shift. Let's click on this. So there is an option apparently that we put in a certain amount of RPM on one block. And if you power this, the output is doubled on the other two outputs there. So I try to set this up. This is something new for me. Oh, that's too bad. I can't make this yet. Because it requires an electron tube, which requires polished rose quartz. I can make the sandpaper. I think it's just paper and sand. But yeah, for the rose quartz, I need to heat up halide, redstone dust, and a crystallization catalyst with the coal forge. And I still can't make the coal forge because you need flint and steel in order to turn the coal block into that coal forge block. So we need to get steel soon. <laughs> so I managed to do it with the cogwheels instead. Everything seems to be really well balanced now. So the crushing wheels are no longer bottlenecking. The heating here in the back of the unfired ingot molds is just about right. I don't think you could double the speed here even. So perfectly happy with this now. Okay, then yeah, wait, let's take a look how many unfired uh, ingot molds we have. I'd say it's roughly like eight, nine hundred. It's definitely enough so we could smelt all the iron and copper we got from the quarry. Okay. Um, <laughs> in the meantime, I also probably put in more than half of all the dirt I had. Oh, it's ran over just for testing to see if that's bottlenecking. Um, I think I'm just gonna at least clear those six chests as well, turn it all into clay. But in the long run, we're probably gonna run out of dirt and clay again. Um, because I'm well, not gonna do that much dirt digging anymore, I feel like. We could, of course, run the quarry more to get more dirt, but uh, in the very long run, we can also automate this. So there is a way to make dirt, but it definitely requires a cobble generator. So the best way is actually the sandy loam dirt that can also be turned into clay. And you make that out of, uh, I think I've shown it before, out of one clay ball, but in the end, you can convert eight of those into eight clay balls. Basically, you spend one, get eight one out. So it feeds back. Then we need saltpeter and white sand, which we can get from rhyolite. Rhyolite is important because if you make a cobble generator, it doesn't make like all the different types of uh, cobble. It only can make gabbro and rhyolite, as far as I know. And of course, it's really convenient that the rhyolite converts into white sand. Now that we actually have enough bituminous coal, ingot molds, and a ton of crushed copper ore, let's actually melt all of it down. Okay, let's turn this on here in the back as well. Kind of curious how we're looking in terms of stressometer. There's not a lot of stuff hooked up. 12,688 remaining. So if I turn this on as well, and maybe the pump here, we already overstressed the system. Yeah, time for the third max sized windmill for sure. Now this is an ingot pile. I also melted down my gold to show it off. Now I really want to make the roof out of copper. But this amount of copper still wouldn't get us very far. It's a very expensive building material. Setting up this dirt to clay converter and also adjusting it took a little bit longer than expected. And I could get to doing the other stuff I actually had planned for the day. But we'll just do it next time. I can report back on some of the experiments I ran. So crops can definitely grow with block light, they don't need skylight. That's gonna come in quite handy, but I definitely do need block light at least. You know, nothing grew. Then I ate nothing but three rolls for the whole episode, and I now maxed out at 1,023. You can also take a look at the nutrient bars. So it seems like if the yeah food item gives you 1.0, then it's basically in just enough to, if you need eat nothing else, so every meal has like 1.0 that you eat, then it's basically just enough to max out the bar. And if it's 0.5, then you get about half of it. Okay, makes sense, it's actually a nice system. Good to know. All right, that's all for today, guys. So the plan for next episode is to finish processing all the cobble we got here, basically wash it and get a couple ores out of it. Then I also wanna do a bit of building again, maybe finish the first floor of the house and do some stuff here and there, and also build a couple quality of life machines. So automate certain tasks in Terraformacraft. Okay, that's all. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.